Hi everybody! I wasn't sure I was going to share it today, but I'm in a particularly good mood because I just turned 38 today. I'm pretty stoked about it, so I wanted to hop on and just share quickly what was running through my mind uh, on these first few hours of my 38th year. I am just feeling so good and so at peace and so happy. Um, all the things that you would want to feel on your birthday and pretty much any day. Um, the pressure that I usually put on myself for a perfect day is not something that I do on a normal basis. It is strategically only on my birthday. I always want to have a perfect day. And that doesn't just go for my birthday. It goes for the people that I care about. I want them to have all the things that they love. I want them to be with the people they love. I want to do the things that they love. And I want them to eat what they want to eat. I want to prepare special treats. I want it to be a day that celebrates their importance on this planet and to me. You know, um, it's not lost on me that my favorite Christmas movie of all time is It's a Wonderful Life. And I sob every year at the exact same point. I could sob right now as I talk to you thinking about it. When, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, you should. Um... When George Bailey's brother, Harry, comes uh, into his house and screams to his brother George, the richest man in town. I think it's such a gift to know the value that you place, that your place is within those around you and your community and the planet and whatever. Because it's easy to forget that and the stresses and the struggles of everyday life. And what would your, what would your life be like without you in it? Right? How would... All of the things that have happened in the years that you've been alive have gone a different way if you weren't there to do whatever it is that you did. Even if it's something that you think is small and may have seemed insignificant at the time. I try to really revel in that. And so I just feel that this year has been an emotional roller coaster for me. Um, but I feel like I've done the most emotional growth like I've, I've done in a really long time just in the, it's been less than a year, uh, several months that I've been doing this YouTube series, looking back on how the very beginning and the hardest stages of my chronic illness, the, the trauma that I faced, accepting it, processing it, talking about it, um, how I've gone, through, what I've gone through, acknowledging what I've gone through, and releasing it into the world has done a great deal for me. Also being very present in the changes and the choices that I make every day about who I want to be, where I want to be, and who I want to be with. And it's just been a really, really great year, hard year, sort of a year and a half of emotional growth, but I'm going to be all the better for it. I've also really tried to let go of the idea that becoming a certain number, a certain age has to look a certain way. I have to let go that if I if I don't have the things that I want or I'm not where I want to be at this exact moment that it's not a reason to celebrate, you know. I was never one of those people that were like you only celebrate on big birthdays like 16 and 21 and 30 and 90 um that every year is a, is important and every day counts and it's a lot of days that other people don't get. And that's important too. But also where you are in your life. I feel like birthdays and New Year's and as a December baby, I'm always right in that niche, always forces us to reflect upon where we are in our life. And just because things aren't as best as we hoped or as great as they're going to be doesn't mean that today doesn't count, that today isn't value, today isn't special. And I feel like I'm finally really accepting that. It's a lot, to, you know, I, I think it a lot. I try to, to breathe it and accept it and to live it. But it takes time and it takes practice. You know, we're not always very kind to ourselves. We're always very hard on ourselves. It's always very easy to look outside and compare and, you know, the grass is always greener. And I'm done with that. Right? I'm going to be proud of who I am today and happy. And it really... It really is a good feeling. In terms of perfect days, it's also about birthday plans. Um, 
as a December baby, any of you December babies out there will know, birthdays are hard, even when it comes to how you're going to celebrate. And for me, like I said, celebrating is important. For everybody and for myself, I've always been very big on celebrations. Not that they have to be elaborate, although that can be fun too. Um, but it has to be something. You know, it can't just be a regular day. And so December babies have an uh, extra uh, set of um, difficulty in that people always have plans, right? It's hard to ask other people to go out, to spend money, to make plans, to commit to things. Um, maybe they have Christmas parties or family obligations or whatever it may be, work functions. And so to lock down, I spent so many years of my young life, like, trying to lock down the perfect date and when I was in college uh it was finals week and people were going home who was home already who wasn't there was always like something it's always something it's very hard I heard this story from my godchild many years ago and it she was upset about it but it makes me laugh now thinking like of all the th the reasons people give you why they can't go out on your December birthdays and she said that once her friend told her that she had to stay home, it was their designated fam her family's designated night to stay in their pajamas and watch TV. Which I appreciate sentiment, I appreciate tradition, but like, you could do that later. Whatever. As I've gotten older, that's not so much uh, important to me who, how many people, or I'm not going out clubbing or anything like that. It's more like I've learned over the test of time. You only need one. You only need one person that really cares about you to go out and do something that you want to do. For instance, me. Today, I am home. I had a little bit of a rough morning. It is hurricaning in Brooklyn, New York today. Hurricaning. And my head hates it. My head hates it. But, so I had to sleep in. I had breakfast plans. I had to change up my, what I thought I was doing today. And that's okay. Because I didn't need to run around doing 95 things. Even my nails. I was going to get my nails done, but I'm going to be going out for dinner later, and I don't feel like going out and in, in the sogging rain all day today. So I'm going tomorrow. But normally that would have bothered me. Something as stupid as that would have bothered that my nails are atrocious, and it's my birthday. You know, I put such a emphasis on the day. But in actuality, in my house, we celebrate weeks. My mother has practically got a goddamn month at this point. And... I for sure am having a week. I am going out to a Mexican restaurant tonight with my parents. I'm really looking forward to a margarita and some excellent guac and a burrito or two should fall my way. And so be it. I started off this week um, having some cousins come over when we went to see Christmas lights. Now I'm going to pause here because while I had an excellent day, I normally am very, very specific about intertwining birthday and Christmas as a December baby. That's just an automatic rule. My birthday present is never to be wrapped in Christmas paper. I'm not listening to Christmas music unless I really feel like it. I have been known to watch It's a Wonderful Life, but like I said, it's one of my favorite movies. Separation of church and state at all times. Birthdays and Christmas don't mix just because uh, a week from today is going to be Christmas Eve. And perhaps if I was Jewish, it would have been a different scenario since Hanukkah changes dates. Anywho, we had a wonderful day this weekend. I spent... Uh, Saturday, baking Christmas cookies for the first time using some family recipes, and it came out pretty good for a first try, as well as some other uh, cookies I've been making over the last few years, and I'm pretty proud of them. Um, and then the best things are coming. I have dinner with friends tomorrow night, um, and this weekend I'm getting to go to Philadelphia. Now, for me, getting to go anywhere, even overnight, just to check into a hotel, even if it was probably 10 blocks from my house, is exciting to me. Um... Something about my birthday and vacation is like two favorite things combined, and I love it. And so I'm super excited about that. And I have a nice day planned, and I'm really looking forward to it. So that's that. The other thing I was not sure I was going to share, but it's sort of become family lore um, in my world. Um, but I want to share it for a specific purpose, so I'm going to tell the abbreviated version of the story. When I was six years old, my brother was born. His birthday is two days after mine, but on the year that he was born, um, my birthday happened to fall on a Thursday, and I'm, I'm lying to you. My No, I'm, I'm not lying to you. Scratch that. My birthday fell on a Thursday. On that Saturday, we were having my family's party. 
Now, back in the day in elementary school, like you brought cupcakes to class or whatever the hell you were allowed to. I know now there are all kinds of restrictions. See? It's always good to be the queen. Um, and then on the weekend, I had my family over. Now, I, I come from a very big um, Italian family on my mother's side, and those are the cousins that I'm... When I reference a cousin, it's most likely somebody on that side. For us, cousins aren't just your first cousins. They're your third, your fourth, your fifth, twice removed, whatever the hell that means. Cousin. And so it sort of boggles my mind when I look around my house that we were ever, ever able to fit that many people in here. But I guess a lot of us were, including myself, were a lot smaller than then. And so anyway, there was like 30 to 40 people coming over. My mother had been cooking. My grandmother was here. And my mother was about 34 weeks pregnant with my brother. She wasn't supposed to have him until January. And that's what they had told me. And now when people repeat this story to me, they say that I was screaming that it's not January yet. Well, except I'm a girl with the details. Always have been. Always need them. When you tell me January, no one ever told me that it was a possibility that he could be born in December. Had no clue. So that morning of my party, we were getting ready and my mother's water broke. She had to go to the hospital to have my brother. My father went with her. My grandmother stayed here to continue on with the party, which was all well and good, except that right around dessert time, I remember very clearly, um, my father called. He asked to speak to me to tell me that my brother was born, what his name was, and I was to tell everybody else. And that was exciting. Well, I'm lying to you. It wasn't exciting at the time. A couple of reasons. The first being that I wanted a sister. A cousin of a similar age, her mother was having a baby and had a girl Another on the other side, same deal, and I just wanted a sister. I always have, I always do. And God gave me a lot of sisters and my cousins and the friends that I have and things like that. But I didn't understand that at the time. I was just turning six. Anyway, once I announced to the group, my extended family members, my mother's aunts, my aunts, all literally got up and left to go to the hospital to see them. Now, you have to picture a six-year-old. I'm 38 now, six. Even if other adults stayed in the house, all the kids stayed, but it felt like a stab, like a something. somebody took the breath out of me. My one aunt, she knows who she is, stayed to keep the party going. And that always just really stuck in my mind. And I complained about it for a long time because not only did I feel like when I was younger that I had contend with Christmas, now I had my brother's birthday the same week and it was stealing my thunder. And I love my thunder and I want to keep it going and all to myself. I share this story because it took me not 38 years, but some years of growing and accepting to realize that on that day I was given the greatest gift I would receive I'm trying not to do the ugly cry and getting a baby brother who would ultimately become my best friend so I am honored to share my birthday week with him because he is an incredible human being and he's doing so much good in this world and will continue to do amazing things just like I will. One day we're going to run this entire world. And so the story has a happy ending. So with that tearful happiness, I'm going to sign off and say that I'm going to finish my delicious caramel full fat latte that I made myself, continue being me and celebrating myself today, and just being thrilled to death that for the first time in a really long time, a caramel latte, there's really nothing like it, that I feel better in this body than I have in such a long time. And that even with my headache troubles this morning, I didn't have to take any medication. I am just going to be me. And I'm happy to be me. And I want to thank you for sharing in a little bit of my birthday celebration. Till next time, guys. <laughs>